Welcome back to another video. My name is Chase. I'm Dylan. And together with our friend Oliver, we are Project Today. Over the past six months, we've been turning a retired U-Haul box truck into a tiny home. We have documented that journey here on YouTube, but it is finally time. We are now done with the conversion, and it's time to give you all a tour of our tiny home on wheels. Let's go look at the box truck. First, a little bit about the truck. We bought this truck from U-Haul directly. It is a 2006 Ford E450 box truck. U-Haul gave us a full maintenance history of this truck. It has 120,000 miles on it when we bought it. And since then we've put a few thousand miles on it and it's run just fine so far. Now let's go look inside the truck. Okay, come on in. Welcome inside the box truck. We got the lights on and everything. And as you can see, the first thing that you see when you walk in is this. This is almost like our little mud room. You could even call it the mud room of our box truck right here. First off, we have this awesome coat hanger. We stained the wood of it to match our countertops and table, which you'll see a bit later on. And then to round out this mud room, we also have some shoe storage right down here. We built these little boxes for all of our shoes. We have six boxes and there are obviously three of us so each of us can put two pairs of shoes in these and this is working super super well. Not only does it give us a really nice and easy place to leave shoes but it also keeps us from just putting our shoes somewhere random on the floor. Now as I say that. Yeah uh, uh, <laughs> not exactly always. Oops. Possible that Dylan and I both left our shoes over there. <laughs> Okay, now moving over to our side storage cabinet. So here you can just see we have three drawers and then this cabinet and this top drawer. We have a bunch of kitchen supplies. Ooh. It's kind of gross in there, I'm gonna close that. You think it's gross? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look the cleanest. And then the second drawer, right now honestly, it's just a bunch of random stuff drawer. I don't know how we have so much stuff in here. It's crazy, but we have this drawer for random stuff that we use somewhat often. Then, here's some camera equipment. Camera equipment drawer, very important. Finally, down here in our side storage cabinet, this is where we keep our weights. You know, in van builds, a lot of times, people talk about conserving weight and not using a lot of weight in your build. Yeah, we, we didn't exactly do that. In a lot of cases, we used a lot of wood and a lot of thick wood, thicker than we probably needed for a lot of the builds, and another same thing with that is we have these weights. And this was part of Oliver's non-negotiable in the van. Ooh, throwing him under the bus, are we? I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't have this in the van if it weren't for Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver's non-negotiable in this van was that he wanted us to put in a gym of some kind. So these are our bumper plates, 245s, 225s, 210s, that we'll show you later will go on our gym. This has so much storage, but it's not the only storage in a van. We have storage all over. And one of the main parts we have storage is in these upper cabinets. We have eight of these pretty large upper cabinets. And this is actually the only part of the build that we didn't build ourselves. We just assembled these. These cabinets are from Ikea. We really like them so far. They get the job done to hold our items, I guess. <laughs> here, you can take a look inside my cabinet and see what we have stored in here. In this cabinet, just have some general items, you know, some toiletries, technology, a few books, just a few random things. And you may be wondering, does this stuff move around as we drive? Kind of, a little bit. I mean, if it's all packed in well, which it is right now, pretty well, then a lot of it stays in its place. But maybe, you know, a few things will shift around, but not that bad. And then also, nothing falls out of the cabinets because we have these drawer catchers that prevent it. On the door, we have a little part that will go into there. And it just adds a little bit of resistance, makes these doors slightly harder to open, but then also prevents anything from falling out. And they work very, very well. I mean, we haven't had anything fall out of these cabinets at all while we've been driving out of any of these. So super happy with those. This is, these are my clothes, my clothes cabinet right here. And these are all of the clothes that I have in the truck, except the clothes I'm wearing, I guess. You may look at this and be like, wow, it's crazy you can fit all your clothes in one cabinet, but this is way too many clothes. Honestly, I have way too much stuff. I have probably 15 pairs of socks. Who needs that many socks? That's crazy. Especially you, Dill. You never wear socks. Yeah, I, that's true. I, Burks for life. Burks every day. So I need to get rid of some of these clothes. There's too many clothes in here. 
but for now it all fits in this one cabinet and works pretty well. Those are my two cabinets. And then here are Oliver's two cabinets and Chase's two cabinets over here. Still, I do want to say I do have all of my clothes stored in that one cabinet as well. That's true. That's true. You, you and I are both living that minimalist do. life. There we go. There we go. And then these two cabinets are just, we share them as kitchen cabinets. In here is just some food. Woo. And then in here we have bowls, bananas, plates, <laughs> and paper towels and some cups. What more do you need in a kitchen? There are all of our upper cabinets. There's so much storage. I almost forgot. Something we just added to the van is this dirty clothes holder. We have this netting material up here that holds all our dirty clothes in so that when we drive, they don't go anywhere. But it also provides some nice ventilation to the dirty clothes so they're not in an enclosed space and don't start smelling bad. And another good thing about this is you can take this netting off and then we can use it as a kind of bag to carry the dirty clothes over to the washing machine. Works very well. We're happy with this so far. And now we're going to move on to one of the most fun parts of the entire build. Our couch slash bed. As you can see, we have a beautiful U-shaped couch right here. It's honestly a nice little, uh, what are those couches called? Sectionals. This is a nice sectional couch, you know, and it works super, super well. We also have this beautiful table right in the middle, very sturdy. We struggled with this a lot before, but it is now super, super sturdy. You've seen this bed come together in the last couple of videos. First, it was us putting fabric and upholstering all of these ourselves, and then also staining this table to what it currently is. And honestly, it looks beautiful. One of my favorite parts of the entire truck. Dill, back me up here. I don't know your opinions. Yeah, agreed. Looks great. It's honestly beautiful. This couch is super comfortable. These, these mattresses that we got from Ikea have worked super, super well in terms of just being really comfortable. Also, I need to say my favorite decoration of the entire van has to be or one pillow. <laughs> we have one little orange pillow. One throw pillow. So we can only put it on one side and then the other <laughs> side of the couch, you know, looks kind of naked with that. <laughs> but we only have the one and it works really, really well. <laughs> and now I think we're gonna show this couch turning into a queen size bed. Dylan, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, there we go. That is a fully converted queen size bed now. What used to be a couch is now a very, very comfortable bed. It honestly only takes a few minutes to even get this bed fully set up each night and then only a few minutes to put it away every morning. So it's really not a hassle at all for us. At least it hasn't been so far. We'll see if that changes in the future, we'll let you know. But so far it's just been a really nice and easy conversion process. Uh, love it, love it. All right, let's move on. I guess we should probably put the bed back to normal, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, let's put it away. Yeah. And now we can't forget about the best spot in the entire house, the mom's attic. Our bed for the third person in our truck, which has mostly been me. Hey, that's not true. I've been sleeping in it for the past week. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Dylan and I both really wanted the mums at it, so now we're just splitting time up here. So as you can see, this is just kind of a big, you know, third bed for us. And the person who sleeps up here doesn't have to share the bed with anybody. You've got this window right behind me. And we've also got a little bit of storage on this side of the bed because it doesn't extend all the way to the wall. Chase, the people are wondering, What's it like to sleep in the mom's attic bed where you're so close to the ceiling? It is, um, it's not bad. It's not bad. So you're laying down right here. And I mean, you've got what you think, <laughs> like eight inches. It doesn't between, look like very much right it here. It doesn't look like very much, but when you're laying up here, I don't know, it, is, it hasn't felt bad. But yeah, that is the mom's attic. And those are our beds. Now it's time to talk about my favorite part of the build, <laughs> our electrical system. I cut myself making lunch today, so if you see this, this is my band-aid. We don't have any band-aids in the truck, so I made one out of a tissue and duct tape. Hey, it's, it's pretty functional, honestly. It's staying on there pretty well. Let's get into electrical. This is how we interact with our electrical system on a day-to-day -day basis, our control panel. You can see here, we have a battery monitor so that we can see what levels our batteries are at, 
And yes, it's very inconvenient to read when it's in this spot, but we have an app on our phones that allows us to read it from our phones, so usually we just use that. This powers our inverter, so just with the flick of that switch, you can turn our inverter on and off. Here we have four USB ports to charge our phones and camera, batteries, anything else that uses USB. Then we have an outlet that works like a normal outlet does. <laughs> and finally, our propane switch. We'll talk about that later when we do our kitchen. As I said, this is the outside of our electrical system, what we interact with every day. But now let's go into the electrical cabinet. Here's our electrical system. I never did really clean up these wires to be super organized, but they're all very functional and it is safe, I think. <laughs> you can see here we have three 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate Battleborn batteries. So that's 300 amp hours total of a battery bank. Then here we have a Renogy 2000 watt inverter, which powers all of our outlets in the van. Here's our fuse block that connects to our lights, our fridge, our two fans, and a few other just random DC devices. This is our charge controller. It allows our batteries to be charged from the solar panels on our roof. We have 600 watts of solar on our roof and it's two 300 watt panels wired in series. And so even on a cloudy day like today, right now, we're still getting a decent amount of power. So power comes in from the roof, from the solar panels, down into this charge controller, and then from here into our batteries to power our full system. This electrical system works very well. It's very expensive, but so far it's been worth it. It's worked exactly how we wanted, and I would do the same thing again if given the opportunity. The next part of the tour is actually one of the first projects that we did when we got the truck, and that's install three windows. One here, one on the other side of the truck over there, and then one on the mom's attic. Each one of them actually has a screen that we can open up, so it's just right there, now there's a screen and the window's open. And we can also open the screen, so now it's basically just open to the world. So if it's ever, you know, hot in here and it's cold outside and we want to let that cold air in, we can just do this. and. Also, when we're parked somewhere, like at a beach, we can just open the window and enjoy the sound of the waves crashing against the rocks. And something that none of you have seen yet actually are the window trim. We've installed the window trim on all three windows. And not only does the window trim look really good and kind of finish out the windows, finish this area of the truck, but it's also extremely functional. We actually have created some window covers out of Reflectix, and eventually we are going to put some black fabric on these so they don't look like just this metallic reflective stuff, but they work really well. And the way that we were able to do this is with magnets. When we're ready to go to sleep or we want to kind of convert into stealth mode, we can put the cover up and it sticks right to the magnet behind there on all four corners of the window trim. Honestly, we can be sitting in the truck at night with the lights fully on, cooking, reading, playing cards, and people outside have no idea that we're in there. They can't see any light through our windows. They can't see anything through the reflectors at all. It's honestly great. We can literally be sitting in the middle of the city, people on all sides of us with the lights on, doing whatever we want to be doing, and no one would have any clue. Here's our kitchen. One of the most exciting parts of our build. Extremely functional and beautiful. We'll start with our fridge here. This is a Dometic fridge, 110 liter. I don't know the exact model, but I think it's 110X or 110X, something like that. Here you can see inside our fridge a bit, we have some veggies. Vegetables. It's pretty empty, some fruit, some sauces, peanut butter jelly, Chase's favorite. <laughs> hey, we have frozen bagels. <laughs> it's pretty random. As you can see over here, we have a ton of countertop space here, both here and on the side storage cabinet and even the table if need be. Over here is our sink. We bought this dish dishwashing rack from Target and it somehow fit perfectly. Look at that. Fits perfectly in the <laughs> sink. But here's our sink. Uh, those little drops of water look kind of gross. Sorry about that. As you can see, there's no faucet on the sink right now. This is a just drinking water. We pull this up here and then have a little spigot here that we use for water. That's what we've been using so far. It's worked pretty well, honestly. And then when the water goes into the drain, it comes out down below in this gray water tank. We really need to empty a gray water tank. We haven't in a while and it's starting to smell. It's kind of gross. Here we have a trash can. 
it's pretty full. I'm not exactly going to show in there. <laughs> but we have a trash can, a few other random supplies back here, a fire extinguisher back there, and that's it. The final part of our kitchen is this Camp Chef stove oven combo. You can see we have a two burner stove and then an oven right there. It's connected to a propane system that we'll show in a little bit. We've been using it for the past few weeks and it's, it's worked very well. It's been, yeah, no complaints so far. Really happy with it. Finally here, we have this drawer, big drawer that we keep some pots and pans our instant pot, a few other just random things. And then another part of our kitchen that isn't located in the kitchen area. Where is it, Chase? Show me. It's over here. Oliver's pride and joy right here. This is our pantry. Oh yeah. So it pulls out from the back of our couch, really cool. You can see just, it's just behind our couch cushion but um, we've thought to use the space for a pantry. So you can see we have oatmeal, uh, but spices, we keep all our spices up here, and then some beans. It's a great space, really functional. The final part of our kitchen we have is just aesthetic, just looks beautiful, is this blue tile backsplash, especially with our white window trim. This looks beautiful. We're so happy with this. We saw a preview of our propane switch earlier. Now let's go explore our propane system outside the truck. Our propane system is behind this wall underneath our kitchen. This is our propane locker. We can open it up here. We built a, this ventilated locker. This is glued permanently in place and has a part for ventilation here so that outside air can get in. Your propane needs to be ventilated. Propane goes from this tank through a regulator through a hose to our oven. This is the back of our stove oven combo. One other thing, we have a device in here called a solenoid valve that functions with our propane switch so that we press the switch. When that button is on, propane is going through the system. And then when that button is off, propane is stopped right here. So that means whenever we're not using our propane system, we can turn it off and we know that all the propane is staying in this box and there's nothing else anywhere in the van. So it's all kept in right here. We'll put the wall back up. And behind our lovely kitchen is our rolling sliding door that came with the U-Haul at first. We wanted to turn it into two big outswinging double doors. That idea quickly got thrown out the window. And instead we have kind of just put some insulation on top of it. We have inch thick XPS and then some easy cool painted white. That's where we're at with the sliding door at the back of our truck. And speaking of insulation, for anyone who hasn't seen our earlier videos, we actually do have one inch thick XPS and some easy cool on pretty much every single wall and corner of this truck. The exceptions are going to be the windows, which we now have some window covers for that are made out of reflected. So that's kind of the insulation for them. And other than that, everything is fully insulated. If you watched our last video, you saw us painting over all of the screw holes, putting putty in the screw holes and painting over those. Our ceiling looks so much better now. We absolutely love it. It looks super smooth. But not only that, it also works really, really well. We have these two Max Air fans up here in the ceiling. We use these most of the day, almost every single day, and they are wonderful. We have one in the back and one in the front, <laughs> right above Dill <laughs> right there. So that is our ceiling. Two Max Air fans and then 12 puck lights. To be honest, I just love our ceiling. It's super simple. There's not a lot going on. It's really smooth now that we've got some paint over the top of it. And yeah, that just about wraps up our ceiling. And with that, almost wraps up the interior of the truck. Now we want to move on to a project that is on the outside of the truck that we can't wait to show you all if you haven't seen it before. Okay, this is our gym. We think we are the first van life build to include a gym in this capacity. So the only thing permanently on here are these two metal bars with, your, with a bunch of holes. And then when we put these arms through some of these holes, one on each side. Now this allows us to put a full barbell right there. You can put weights on the side of the barbell. Anywhere we go, we can work out right there. There we go, there it is all set up. And we even have this bench that Oliver built. It's not just a standard bench, you know, you can use it normally, but then also... Three different levels of incline. There you go. How cool is that? This uh, bench folds up and we can store it behind our passenger seat as we drive.
And with the bench stored right here in the cab, we are all ready to go. And that brings us to the cab. As you can see, there isn't a whole lot different between this cab, the cab that we have in our truck, and just the cab that you get when you buy the retired U-Haul. Well, the only thing that we've really done is throw on a couple of seat covers to make our seats look a little bit better. <laughs> but the big change, as I'm sure you've already noticed, is we don't have a middle seat. We actually cut out our middle seat. It is sitting right here behind the driver's seat in case we need to put it back. And instead, what we've got is a pass-through. Our truck did not come with the pass-through. One of the first projects we did months ago was actually cutting this in both the cab and the truck and then putting this little piece of rubber gasket over both of them to create a working pass-through. So now anytime we want, even while we're driving, we can just go from up here to back here. Pretty simple. It is honestly one of the most used features of the truck is going from the cab to the truck whenever we want to. But it also should be said, what Chase just did is not the easiest way to get through our pass-through. You can see here that right now, there's this couch in the way. We call him Craig, this little piece. This little part of our couch is called Craig. You know, it's Craig because he's got the wheels on the bottom and that allows us to basically take Craig and slide him right out of the way. So let's do that. And there we go. With Craig out of the way, this pass-through we can use in its entirety. And it is so much easier to go from truck to cab or cab to truck when Craig is out of the way. So when we're driving, this is kind of how things are set up. We move Craig. We tilt the table upwards, which is a feature of the table that we hadn't really talked about. So Dylan, come on, come on through the pass-through. When we want it to, the table can become fully vertical like this and provide a nice hallway, almost, <laughs> for us to walk through, which is super nice. And when we drive, we have a bungee that basically just holds Craig in place right there. And now we have full access to the cab anytime we want. See how easy that was? Super easy. And then when we're not driving and we just kind of want to sit around, chill, maybe make some food, we can come back here, tilt this table up to its flat position, and then get it set up just like this as a table. And another cool function with this table is when we want to move it around, let's just say we're watching something on our computer or something like that, and we need to put the window cover on, let's just say. We can tilt the table to the side just like that. So it basically can follow us wherever we want to be in the truck. You might not think it's something that matters very much, but it's really fun to just have something sitting on the table and then, you know, be standing up here watching, cooking food, watching, and then sitting down and doing that. It's super simple to tilt the table like that and have it move wherever you want it. So it swivels. Yeah, we love this table. Okay, one other thing that I find is when I come in here, I usually have stuff in my pockets that I just want to throw somewhere. So we put in these little areas back here where we each have one just where you can throw the stuff from your pockets. This really makes it feel like home to me for some reason, having a little place to keep these important things. Also, it serves as a nice spot to store our things while we drive. So that's pretty much everything in the truck. That is pretty much the entire tour done, but we have one more thing to show you all. One of the coolest parts of the truck for sure. Our license plate right there. Project two day. <laughs> that will wrap us up for our tour video. We're extremely proud of what we've been able to do in the past six months. Also, just because we're done building doesn't mean we're done making videos. Actually, we're really just starting because now that this is done, we're gonna be making a ton of videos of what it's like to live out of this box truck. That's the plan. We are living out of this and now we're gonna take you on our adventures. So make sure to subscribe to the channel down below if you're interested in seeing where we're gonna go on these adventures and what it's like to live out of the box truck. And that is going to wrap up our van tour video. I have been waiting so long to make this video. It was awesome to actually finally get to do it. If any of you have any questions or comments about the build, about us, about our future travel plans and things like that, drop them in the comment section down below. Our next video on this channel is going to be a Q&A where we basically take all the questions that we can possibly answer in one video and we're going to answer all of them. So make sure you drop any questions or comments down below and we'll make sure that we answer those in the next video. So again, make sure to subscribe, comment down below any questions you have, like the video, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>